One of the most exciting teams in England is not even playing in the top division. We are looking at Leeds United, a squad filled with young players who are currently doing an exceptional job on their run back into Premier League football. As you can see, Leeds United currently in second place, right behind Leicester City. Both teams looking incredible. Leicester probably the one where I can guarantee that they're going to go up. But with Leeds United, they will have to fight off former Premier League sides like Southampton, West Brom and such to stay up there in the top two. Don't drop into the playoffs and get back into Premier League football. I'll be completely honest. The first team I ever heard of when it comes to English football was Leeds United. Are you serious? Yes. Back when I lived in Turkey, Leeds United was that team, you know. And right now, they are in that second division with loads of great young players who have proven their worth in this season and are getting them back to where they belong to. And I want to jump into this journey. I want to see what I can do with this Leeds United squad and hopefully grow some of the players that are already here into absolute legends at the club. So let's start off immediately with the tactics. I'm going to go gegenpressing pressing with this squad and already I can sign a bunch of coaches as you can tell. Big emphasis on defense and then also midfield and attack as we start things off. But most importantly, let's get to know this squad and their performances this season. We are looking at Leeds United's best player in Somerville right now. He is the main man in this squad with an average rating of 7.98 so far this season with 15 goals and 8 assists. That is incredible, but he's not the only one. Even Daniel James has 16 goal contributions this season. That is how far they have really taken things. And honestly, going back to when Leeds United were champions. Back in 91-92, the year I was born, that was where they were at their height. And I feel destined to be coming over here and taking over the squad right now because last time it was successful was when I was born. So that tells me it's been way too long for a big club like Leeds United to be up there winning trophies again. So going into the squad again, Ruta, amazing performances this season. He was one of the most exciting transfers that Leeds United brought in at the time for a bunch of money. I believe it was their record signing. And then it all fell apart as they were in the Premier League. He was hailed as one of the worst transfers. Right now, he is looking to be one of the main players, one of the key players to take them back into Premier League football. Right behind him, you have Pirot, who was amazing at Swansea, if I'm not mistaken, before his time at Leeds United right now, where he already has 11 goals this season. Maybe we need to play him in that camp position. We'll see how it goes. But it's a Dutch player who's six foot one tall, quite physical, and could be quite useful in that spot for us right behind Ruta. On the left-hand side, the most exciting player of this team, the man who broke the hearts of Liverpool fans at one point. I still remember that one game where he destroyed us, and he is now here in that left midfield position. Someone that Leeds United could potentially sell on for boatloads of money in the upcoming season. So, Leeds United fans, let me know. If you're watching this video, who's your favorite player in your team right now? If you aren't even a Leeds United fan, let me know which one you find to be the most high potential player in this team that could move on to bigger things down the line if they were to leave this Leeds squad. Ampadu, a lot of people will remember this guy from back in the day when he was that talent coming out of Chelsea. Then he moved over to Leipzig, played a little bit in Italy, and things haven't been that great. But from what I've heard, especially from people like Nick 28T, who are huge Leeds United fans, he has been immense for them this season. Then you have Kamara here, a former Rangers player, if I'm not mistaken. And Daniel James. Daniel James just reviving his career to the max after leaving Leeds United for Manchester United. He did come back. And the Lost Sun is performing so well for them. Getting 16 goal contributions is incredible. And then you have Archie Gray. This guy is potentially one of the biggest talents in England. 
I want him to be one of the key players in this team if possible. Then you have Pascal Stroik, who has been here for quite a while. Still a youngster, actually. And then you have Rodon, who also has been performing really well for them this season, based on the stats that I'm seeing. Six foot four tall. And then you have Melier, who obviously is a very talented French goalkeeper. Six foot five tall. In that season where Leeds United did go down, I think he was really trying his absolute best to keep those goals away from the squad, but things didn't go as well. And then you have possibly one of the biggest talents in the team with Gnonto as well. This kid is huge. He still has so much potential in him. And uh, he did have a couple of issues that he basically caused himself but basically hinting that he would like to leave Leeds United at that time when they went down into the championship, kind of apparently like didn't even want to play. And I remember that time where it was in the news as well. People were talking about it all the time. But now Gnonto seems to be back and kind of re-involved in the squad. Let me know about his current situation in the comments if you can. And then we obviously have Gruev who has come over from Werder Bremen, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you have some others as well, some pretty talented players like this Joseph guy who probably have some decent potential on him. Cresswell is here, 20 years old. Gellard, the forever talent of Leeds United is here. Patrick Bamford, who might have just scored one of the most ridiculous goals you will see this year. If you haven't, please just type into YouTube Patrick Bamford goal. Trust me, you do not want to miss that. The guy scored one of the most ridiculous ones you'll see. And then you also have Firpo here who actually has four assists this season, I'm seeing. I remember a lot of people talking about him as the failed transfer. So again, going into this, I'm very excited about the original team of Leeds United already. I genuinely could go multiple years without making any transfers. And honestly, for the first year, I'm not going to be touching anything. I will look up if Leeds United actually bought anyone in the winter transfer window. But apart from that, no one's coming in, no one's leaving. By the way, the funniest thing about this team is that the highest rated players that belong to Leeds United currently as we speak aren't even in the squad. They're all loaned out. Mark Rocca, Roberts, Christensen, Harrison. And then we have Verba, we have Koch, we have Sinistera, who I believe actually signed permanently for Bournemouth. I believe they pay 20 million for him now. And a lot of Leeds United fans are upset at him. I still remember Sinistera from Feyenoord. He was my favorite player over there. He was ridiculous, honestly. The way he was getting past people, scoring on his right, on his left. So Sinistera now going to Bournemouth and sticking around. And then you have Lorente as well, who's out on loan at AS Roma. So loads of players are going to be coming back next season. But the ones that have actually been sold, like Luis Sinistera, if he has actually been sold, I'll check again on social media. I will actually let them go as well. Real quick, based on how Leeds United played last game out, they won 4-0 against Swansea. Piro was up top, Ruta in the camp position, Somerville on the left, Gnonto on the right, Kamara Gruev in the midfield, Ampadu back into centre-back, which is such a good thing to have a player that can just play anywhere. So uh, then you have Byram on the left-hand side. I believe it was actually him. No, nope, it was actually Firpo. So Firpo played left-back, Ampadu, Rodon, Archie Gray as the right back, which is actually the position I'm going to turn him into as well. I will make Gray an actual right back for us and then obviously Melier in goal. A 4-0 victory against Swansea. Before that, it was a 3-0 victory against Rotherham. Before that, it was another victory against Bristol City. They are now on a run of like eight games back to back, which they have won all of them, where they kept a clean sheet most times except once. So Leeds United definitely is on fire. So our first season in the championship is done and it is also our last season due to the fact that Leeds United, just like in real life, have come into that second place, 102 points, Leicester City on 113 and who knows? Maybe this is actually going ahead and telling the future, but it actually isn't because right now after 32 games, Leeds United already lost six. Right here, we only lost four, but... Hey, still quite interesting to see. Second place, just ahead of Southampton. Leeds United fans, take that as what you will, because obviously that's something you want to achieve. Maybe this is a sign. So let's go and see the team that has pulled this off. So Piro up to a 79. For him to actually play, I had to go ahead and break Bamford's legs. Yep, I did that. And then we also have Ruta in the camp position going up to an 80, while Ampadu is rocking it. At CDM on a 79 rating, Rodon and Stroik are looking solid. 
Somerville has gone up to an 80 right now with Gnonto on a 76. Also requested a transfer, just so you know. So some of these players are actually wanting to leave. And that's something we have to keep in mind as we do go up into Premier League football now. Now at this stage, I want to be somewhat realistic. I want to think about what Leeds United could do, which players they could actually hold on to, and which ones are probably going to be getting a move. And honestly, on that list, Somerville has to be very, very high. He really has to be. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead for a second and check out how long his contract still goes. And I found it. So Somerville's contract goes until June 2026. Ruta's contract goes to 2028. Same for Melier to 2026, just like Somerville. Gnonto until 2027. And it seems like most of the players are kind of safe in terms of the contract lengths. But then again, I don't know if they have any release clauses in there. And if we're being honest, obviously, Somerville is going to be one of the most expensive players in our team. Yep, 25 million in terms of market value right there, just alongside Ruta. And uh, I know this is going to hurt Leeds United fans, but honestly, guys, after the performance this season, I think he's going to get a big move. Someone is going to spend big money on him and Leeds United is not going to be able to hold on to him. I think Ruta is one where a lot of teams might recognize his performances this season, but they will still wait and see if he can perform in the Premier League again, because last time he failed. So I think Ruta sticks around. Sinistera, I'm going to sell, as I said before. Piro, I think, has proven himself in the championship multiple times now, but I don't think anyone wants to snap him up yet. When it comes to the goalkeeper, I don't know. Does anyone want... Is like any, any Premier League club desperately looking for a goalkeeper? I don't think there really is anyone in the Prem that would like to get Melier and a team where Melier is like, oh, they're much better than Leeds United. I think the top six are quite settled in who they have or quite settled in the fact that they want to spend big money going forward to bring in an even higher profile goalkeeper. So I think he's kind of safe in that sense. The same goes for Ampadu. Gnonto... I, I can see this boy forcing his way out. And as I said before, he did request a transfer. So I will probably let go of Gnonto and Somerville as well and then build from there. Take a look at the new Leeds United team of the new season because things have changed. Let me show you what I've done with these traitors. Yes, we have let go of anyone that left Leeds United when they went down. Now, much respect to Somerville. He had offers at the time. He stuck around. He stuck around. And now he is going and he has earned his spot at a team like Spurs. And honestly, when seeing that, I'm like, bro, Somerville would be perfect at Spurs. So he is going across there. Verba, who left to Gladbach, he can be sold. Gnonto, who's obviously requesting a transfer again. Goodbye. I, we, I, we have Dan James. Koch, who has gone to Eintracht Frankfurt, where he actually performs really well, he can go as well for 14.5. Lorente, who left to AS Roma, goodbye, buddy. Roca, who has gone to Spain, he can go as well for 10.5 million. Christensen, also gone to AS Roma. When Leeds United needed these players the most, they all left. Brendan Arison specifically as well, going to Union Berlin to just sit on the bench. Good luck, buddy, in your career at Crystal Palace. Harrison, who has been consistently playing for Everton this season in the Premier League, he can go as well. And Gruev sadly has to go because he requested a transfer as well. And I cannot keep him here. Shackleton is going out on loan. Now, with all these deals done, we're at 200 and 15 million in the budget right now when it comes to transfers and let me tell you this if you if Leeds United do go up into the Premier League and they actually sell on people like Somerville and such it can make big back like players like Somerville should be 50 million plus or 40 million plus for sure and seeing this 250 million I'm like I don't want to spend it all but genuinely speaking, going up into the Prem gives teams insane budgets. So I am willing to spend a big chunk of it. And I need to make sure where I spend that money and spend it the right way and not make any mistakes that could lead Leeds United down into the championship again. Even though we have a huge budget, I want to start off small. And this is kind of 
behind the small, we're bringing in a player from River Plate, Rodrigo Villagra. As you guys know, River Plate, Boca Juniors, some of these teams over in Argentina, Vélez Sarsfield, they come up with incredible talents. And this is possibly the next one from uh, the likes of River Plate. Now, he just recently joined, from what I can tell. Villagra is a big talent. I haven't used yet this year. Comes in at a 77 rating. Not a lot of pace, okay passing, but most importantly, good defending, good physicality, 23 years old. This is one of those transfers you make as a team to potentially sell the players on for huge money because they have the ability to become very exciting on the transfer market for other teams to look at and bring them into their into their squad for that big chunk of money. So, Milagra, welcome to Leeds United. Hopefully, you can become an unreal Enzo-like midfielder for us. Eintracht Frankfurt have been making some very exciting moves lately, and this is one of them. Fares Chaibi, who I believe came in from Toulouse, and instantly this boy is having an impact. He has already become a player that takes set pieces, a player that in the attack with Marmouche seems to be the perfect duo. Eintracht is very exciting, and now they have also signed Ekitik, so... Things are moving forward for the team. I'm sorry, though, because I need to break up that squad right now. Fares Chaibi is going to be the replacement for Somerville in our squad. This is a guy that could genuinely blow up in terms of his potential. There's no roof to it. I can't believe he only has 74 pace right there. That is very, very low. But nonetheless, an incredibly technical player that I feel like could be one of the most exciting Bundesliga players this season and possibly the next year as well. So for me, it just made sense to bring someone like him into this team who probably could even play in the camp position, as we can tell right there. Afaris Chaibi from Eintracht over to Leeds United. That deal is done. 14 million spent. And I feel like we've spent it well. Signing City Stero from Feyenoord hasn't really worked out, but they should have gone for this one. Malasia. This player has obviously been playing for Manchester United, but the last time he actually played for them is what feels like a year ago. At least, I mean, that's how it feels. He has been injured for quite some time. I don't know what is going on, but now we're bringing in a healthy Tyrell Malasia into our team because, again, when I was watching the Feyenoord games back in the day when Sinistera was there and I was amazed by what they were able to pull off in that team, Malasia was such a huge part of their game on that left-hand side alongside Sinistera. And now I want him to be the guy in that left-back position for us. I want to give him another chance in the Premier League in a squad that will trust him in a squad that will not just bench him as soon as Luke Shaw is fit again. So here it goes. Malasia comes in at an 80 rating. And honestly, guys, I really hope he's back fit soon because it would be a shame to see this guy's career just, you know, go off into the distance and disappear. So here he is. He's going to be supporting Chaibi on that left-hand side, and I can see that become an extremely good partnership. I am looking for a CDM that is also a great playmaker that also can take set pieces for the team and prepare moments for his squad to score goals and even take free kicks to go ahead and score goals himself. And when I'm naming all of those things on my list, there's one player at Valencia that is really good at it. Used to be at Levante in the second division, now at Valencia in La Liga. This man is a big talent, Pepe Lu. I don't see him sticking around at Valencia for too long because he's just too good for the squad right now, in my opinion. And Valencia is known for selling players for good amounts. So here we go. Pepe Lu is becoming the new CDM next to Villagra in this team. Villagra, again, the man that's going to do most of the defending. But Pepe Lu is the one that can create 82 passing on him right there. Long ball pass, Tiki Taka. This guy is very impressive. If you guys have not seen him, seen him play football, please do so. He's very talented at what he does. And I truly believe... A great player for any team moving forward. So, Pepe Lu, welcome to the team. You're going to be very important to us. And as I have now solved most of the issues in this team, I still have around 100 million to spend, but I don't want to. I'm going to trust this team as things go. And, Gray, I'm going to give you a chance to become a proper Premier League player in that right-back position. 
I'm not giving up on you yet. Well, Leeds United are not waiting to progress through the Premier League. They just go ahead and smash it instantly. Seventh. Guys, not outside of the top 10 to start things off. No, Leeds United go straight into the top seven. 62 points whilst letting go a couple of very important players as well. So we are building something very special here at Leeds United. You know, up to an 83 at this stage. The man is only 25 years old. He can keep going and the same goes for Ruta. On the left, Chaibi up to an 82. Pepe Lu, 85. Let's go. Vilagra up to an 80. I believe he was a 77. And Dan James making his return to Premier League football now on an 81 rating. I respect it. And RG Gray has gone up to a 78. And with that, he has now confirmed that he will remain the main right back for this team. Despite being the lowest rated player in the team, he is the future. Ampadu has been turn into a center back which is the position he has been playing a lot lately for Leeds United and then we have Stroke in here at six foot three uh with that 80 rating and then Malasia coming in plus three growth he shows his gratitude to this Leeds United squad as well which is great so who has been scoring the goals of course it has been Joel Piro coming through with 17 and 9 Chaibi 10 goals and four assists Pepe Lu, I told you he would get involved in the attack seven and three but you know what? Not that many goals being scored this season. It has been spread out quite nicely. But that is definitely interesting stuff to look at. Now, in the seventh position, do you get Conference League football? You might. I'm not too sure because I believe even there's like a 70-something percent chance that the top five, instead of the top four, get Champions League football in the Premier League this season if they finish in the top five. So that's mad to me. So I assume sixth gets Europa League, seventh possibly as well. Maybe eighth gets Conference League as well. I'm not too sure how that structure is going to work. But man, it is nice to see Leeds United back up there. Let's bring back the vibe of 91-92 and go for titles again. I think I mentioned this guy to you before, but he is still rocking it in the Serie A. This is someone that definitely in the summer is getting a move. I'd be highly surprised if Mr. Bongiorno is sticking around at Torino. He is either joining a massive Italian side or getting a move to a team outside of Italy instantly. Alessandro Bongiorno joining us for, and with an 80, 83 rating, I wanted to say. And he comes in and Stroke goes down onto the bench. And here he comes, 83 rated, left footed, incredible performances in the Serie A. And he is a leader of men. He does have that trait on him, which you can't see here. But uh, when I was looking for him on the transfer market, it did say that. He has the block and aerial type there. He is six foot three tall. Italian center backs back in the day used to be incredible with the likes of Nesta, Maldini and such. So now I wanted someone with a little bit of top five league experience to join us here. Nothing against Pascal Stroik, but um, I do feel like this is the right decision to make moving forward for this team. The season is done and I can tell you one thing. The second half was immaculate. After the first half of the season, we were only sat in the eighth position. And now, top. Top of the league. Leeds United have won the title again for the first time since 91-92. This is incredible. 80 points, our second season in the Prem. And we're already beating some of the teams that are spending billions on their team. This is amazing, man. I love it. I really do. Bongiorno has come in as the leader of men and has showcased what he's capable of instantly. And Villagra got injured. Hopefully he's fine. But we have Piron at 86, Chaibi 86, Malasia as well, Melier as well. Highest rated player in the team is Pepe Lu. Pay attention to that. And also pay attention to the fact that a bunch of players have come back from their loan deals. Joseph was loaned out for two years. Gellart as well. These guys are now back and they're looking solid, just like Shackleton, who has become a backup to Gray. And honestly, I love the fact that we have so many backups here. I don't actually have to go out and buy some. So good stuff from Leeds United, man. Let's see who has scored. Piro, 23 and 4. Not that incredible for an 86 rated player, but we'll take it. You shot us towards the title. 
Ruta, incredible season there, coming up with 27 goal contributions from the cam position. Chaibi with 20 goal contributions, and James with 8 and 4, only growing up, growing to an 83. I do think next season, with that Premier League money that we now get for winning the league and qualifying for Champions League football, I'm very open to bringing in a world class right midfielder into the team because. Who doesn't want to join the Premier League champions? Let's sign someone who already plays in the Premier League. We are looking at Olis joining us from Crystal Palace as he wants to take his game to the next level and play for trophies. This is his perfect opportunity. Him and Eze at Crystal Palace, when they are both fit, it's just so much fun to watch them play. Sadly, I think he actually picked up yet another injury again, but he is now officially our most important, not most important, most high value signing, most expensive player joining us right now at the rating of 86, turning someone like Dan James into a backup player. And here we go. Olis comes in with the 85, with a lot of pace, good shooting, passing, and most importantly, incredible dribbling and the left foot to cut inside and finesse shot the ball into the back of the net and also has that dead ball on him, which is going to be quite useful. I truly do believe that we have created an incredible squad right here whilst keeping a couple of the original, original players of Leeds United. I can't wait to see what this team does this season. I, for some reason, believe we're not going to win the Premier League back-to-back, -back, but let's see how that goes. The season ends right here in 2027, where we beat Benfica first time around, but the second game, they came back massively. 4-1 loss, kicking us, kicking us out in around the 16. And in the Premier League, my friends, it didn't work out. Yes, Leeds United on 73 points, 9 points behind Manchester City. It was to be expected. We cannot think that we can just come in here and dominate the Premier League for years to come. So it's fine. We are in that second position, but we're going to be targeting that first spot again because our team now, in my opinion, is ready for it. 88 up top in both of those attacking positions. 89 on the left, 88 on the right, and then in CDM positions, we have two players who have amazing qualities, especially Pepalu moving forward. Malasia up to an 88, Bongiorno up to an 88, Ampadu as well. Archie Gray still trailing, but it's going to be fine. He's going to get there hopefully next season. And Melier is one of the best goalkeepers in the world right now. And we do have a very solid bench with an 85 rated Dan James and an 82 rated Pascal Stroik and filled with a couple of very talented players waiting for their opportunities. So... Very good season from Leeds. Great season from the new signing, Olise. Coming in with 27 goal contributions instantly. That kit does look very nice on him. So let's move into the next year in which I truly believe that this squad right here that you are seeing is going to be capable of winning anything they take part in. And off we go. We played against Basel, lads, the first time in the Champions League knockout stages, which was surprising and surprisingly enough. But now we have beaten AC Milan and also Manchester United to then go into the final against Lens. I love it. I freaking love it. Last time I played against Marseille, this time I played against Lens. Oh, wait. Last time when I played against Marseille, I lost. This is not a good sign. Dude. I love it when I come up against teams that I just don't expect. So this is huge. It's massive. And let me show you here again. So against Basel, we basically barely got by. Then against AC Milan, also barely got past them. Against Manchester United as well. At least we're giving our fans some incredible memories right here, which is obviously great. But uh, probably not that good for their hearts. So we are looking at a team that now has Gray as an 87 rated player as the lowest rated one, Ampadu and Bongiorno on the 88, and the rest of the team just either around the 90 or right on it like Oli. So I am just ready to use this team, man. 4-2-3-1 formation. We're going to go straight at them. And we do have Speedy Gonzalez on the bench. Dan James could come off and just immediately impact the game if needed. So we have... A hidden weapon there. Now, going into the uh, Premier League, 
I don't think we did... Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think we did as well as I hoped. Leeds United got second, so we won the Premier League, and after that, twice we have come in into that second place, which obviously isn't amazing, but still... We're keeping on qualifying for Champions League football. And I think that's something that Leeds United fans would love to experience. So this is good enough for now. And I also need to check out our team's performance before we go and check out our opponents. Hiro coming in with 35 and 7. I believe that is actually his best season. Or at least with 20 and 9, which seems quite similar to the numbers he had last season. Rita with 18 and 18. Very nice. Shaibi with 8 and 12. Dan James off the bench with 7 and 2. Malasia getting stuff done. Pepe Lu getting involved. Archie Gray with 7 assists from right back. And now, the moment of truth. Who the hell do they have in their team to be playing in the Champions League final? Elie Vahi up top alongside Oris Tanio. They have Lefebvre. Okay, that is the oddest name of a region I've ever seen. Ramsey on the left-hand side. Bryce Mendes from Real Sociedad in midfield alongside Ilic, who used to be at Hellas Verona. We have Kulusevski on the right-hand side, former Juventus, current Spurs player. Schurz from Torino, former Ajax player. Anderson from Crystal Palace. Ramirez, another region. And then Lucas Mantella in goal. It is the 3-4-2-1 formation of Xabi Alonso, so I am kind of scared of it because I've used it plenty of times just now in the past couple of weeks, and I love it, so... This is going to be quite the battle, and I'm really looking forward to it. And off we go into the final loss. I know I've lost against a French team last time around. It's not going to happen this time, even though you do have quite an interesting squad and are playing a formation that I seem to be vulnerable against. You're not going to get inside the box with that. Great. Steals it. Olis making the run. Now down the right, we have two players making runs. It's Archie Gray continuing his... Olis gets in behind. Stops. Finds the man in the middle. And that's the strike to take the lead in the 19th minute. Yeah! It is Puro scoring the goal. The big man up top is the one to finish this beautiful move off the right-hand side. Lots of movement. Lots of great passing here at the end of the day. And the finish was just... The last piece of the puzzle. Oh, yes. Let's go. Good work. And then I pass it straight into them. That's not it. That is not it, is it? Ampadu, you got to get there. And he gives away a penalty. He gives away a penalty. <sighs> That's rough. 1-1. One, one. Oh, disrespectful, bro. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't like that. I hate it. I absolutely hate it when they do that. 1-1. One, one. Nah, you're kidding. What a save for Millier. Unbelievable. That saved us. That might just be the reason as to why we win this game in the end. Nice throw. Off we go to the left. Chaibi. Now let's see what this left-hand side can do. Chaibi on a run. He's through on goal. Faris Chaibi, let's go. 69th minute. Get out of here, Lance. You had your chance against Merlier, but you didn't use it. And for that, you need to suffer now. Uh oh, they're getting another chance here. Ampadu trying to stop them. It's Merlier again. 90 plus one. Ref, blow the whistle. Come on now. They're playing it back. He blows the whistle. Leeds United pick up the trophy. Yes! And Ampadu, the original right here, is going to be lifting that trophy. We had a ton of fun with this Leeds United team, I have to admit. It was great to bring back the glory of 91-92. And now they're lifting that European trophy on top of it. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in into today's video. If you watched until now, you probably really enjoyed yourself. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe before you go. Have a good one. Take care and peace.